All right, so I've been really good at trying new things since I started this YouTube channel. I'm proud of that, but I'm not gonna lie with you. The Bike Friday Alpaca sat in my garage for a while. I knew I wanted to test it and try it out, but being that it was so out of the norm of bikes I test, it took some internal coaxing. So last month, I finally took it out of the box and started pedaling it around, and wow, was I pleasantly surprised. Coming from someone that has never pedaled a folding bike before, there were some interesting observations and takeaways. So in this video, I wanna share my initial thoughts on folding bikes and talk about the new Bike Friday Alpaca. Let's do it. Okay, first off, who is Bike Friday? Before Joe Cruz did an interview with Willie of Bike Friday on our website, bikepacking.com, I had never heard of the brand. Uh, this is a testament to maybe a closed mind and perhaps my unwillingness to acknowledge something different, but now I'm glad I know that they are around and exist. Bike Friday was created by Alan and Hans Scholz in the early 90s. Their goal was simple, to create bikes that were easier to travel with. Today, Bike Friday is still run by the Scholes family and employs 20 folks in Eugene, Oregon. All right, let's get into my observations. Yes, I know, this is an obvious one, but it folds. But really, what is a folding bike good for? Well, folding bikes are smaller, much smaller than your typical bike. And when it folds, it makes carrying, traveling, and packing down much easier and practical. And because of that, it will likely make you kind of not think as hard about packing a bike for your next trip, whether you're driving, taking the train, the bus, what have you. Having this flexibility makes you more apt to bringing a bike along with you, and riding a bike is, well, much more fun than not riding one. The all pack of folds just like all of the Bike Friday offerings with two quick releases, one at the seat tube here and one at the head tube with a pivot near the bottom bracket. The process is as fast as advertised, under 30 seconds. And because of the small pack size and super easy collapse, I can for sure see this being a great option for, say, pack rafting. Not to mention if you live in a city and commute, it's a great option to bring to your office without having to haul a big bike around or fear that your bike might get stolen outside. So a folding bike, to say it looks different is an understatement. And I had to find some courage to jump on it. But does it really ride differently? Short answer, yes and no. Initially, what I did was I set my expectations rather low. And in turn, I was actually pleasantly surprised. After all, it's still a bike and bikes make me happy. But in reality, it pedals, it rolls, and feels like you're riding a bike. But how did the alpaca surprise me so much? That leads me to geometry. Before we get into geometry, I just wanted to let everybody know that this video is supported in part by Terraval Tires. Like many cycling brands, there's a passionate group of cyclists behind Terraval. Their tires are designed and inspired by the routes and terrain they've ridden. And that's why you might notice Terraval tire models are named after specific regions with distinct terrain and even specific trails in some cases. So to learn more about Terraval's development process and a bit more about their tire models, you can click on this link right here or find the link in the description below. All right, so what is the difference between a folding bike and a non-folding bike? Well, it's pretty simple. Wheel size for starters. We usually see folding bikes in the 20 inch wheel range. Uh, folding bikes also typically have much shorter wheel bases and generally smaller frame measurements as the frame is built around smaller wheels. This of course excludes the seat mast and the bar riser as these are parts of the folding bike that position the rider to pedal the bike similar to a traditional bike. But looking at other folding bikes and 20 inch wheel bikes, the alpaca, it's different. First off, it's built specifically for off-road travel, which means the geometry needs to be tweaked to give it more stability and confidence. Bike Friday not only lowered the bottom bracket on this bike compared to their other touring bikes, but they also increased the wheelbase by increasing the length of the front center. For example, the 58 centimeter Alpaca has a wheelbase of 1,050 millimeters. The Velo Orange Neutrino in a similar size does not even hit 1,000 millimeters. The length of the alpaca was actually very noticeable on trail and off-road terrain. I was able to hold speed on single track, tackle some obstacles that I was not sure it could handle, and it felt very grounded and confident, especially on slow switchbacky climbs. On the descending side of things, I found that it lacked confidence in taking corners and turning at higher speeds. The taller nature of the bike made me wanna stay upright or put me more in that upright position, despite the small wheel size. 
I still managed to have a blast on descents and I was even looking for my dropper lever that wasn't there because I was having enough fun where I found that a dropper would have actually been useful. All right, so that leads me to the smaller 20 inch by 2.4 inch wheels. Throw a bigger volume tire on any bike and you'll notice a difference. But when you pair it with geometry changes, it truly makes for a more inspiring ride. And that's exactly what Bike Friday did with the Alpaca compared to their other touring options. So my first few rides on the Alpaca felt eh, twitchy. Um, more twitchy than many of the bikes I've ever pedaled before. But that also comes with the territory of small wheels. And it does take some adjustment and time to get used to that. But once you do get used to it, that twitchy adjective becomes turny. No longer twitchy, it's turny now. Similar to one going from a 29er to a 27.5. You notice the wheel has a little bit more maneuverability and an overall more nimble ride quality. As I mentioned, I felt very confident on my tight turns and climbing at very slow speeds or even track standing on the Alpaca. And while it didn't feel confident blasting through rock gardens as it certainly is a bit more rough versus a bike that could say roll over obstacles a little bit better, because of the turny nature of the wheels, it does a great job of avoiding rocks and helps navigate rough trails with ease, especially paired with those 2.4 inch volume tires. I would say the biggest downside to the smaller wheel is that the bike does not carry momentum like a 26, 27.5 or 29 inch wheel. So I felt myself working a little bit harder, especially on flat ground. But as far as acceleration goes, well, it accelerates faster than anything I've ever been on. Speaking of small wheels and pedaling, this is a big talking point in the folding bike realm. Because the bike and wheels are so small, gearing, chain length, derailleurs, they all are somewhat limited, especially as it pertains to the Alpaca because it's designed for off-road travel, meaning that all of the drivetrain and all of the bits are a little bit closer to the ground than your traditional bike. And you'll probably notice that the drivetrain just might get a little bit dirtier, a little bit quicker. Folding bikes also have a lower gear ratio. So one complete stroke of the crank here basically accomplishes one rotation of the rear wheel. Whereas say a 700C bike, you are going to get multiple rotations of that rear wheel with one complete pedal stroke. That all said, I didn't really have any issues with this gearing specifically. This bike uh, came with a 42 tooth chain ring and an 1140 cassette. And I pedaled some pretty steep single tracks and flat roads and I was really happy with the gearing to be honest. If I were to load this bike up, I think I might go with that 40 tooth up front. Generally speaking here, I didn't feel like I needed that front derailleur. That being said, Bike Friday does offer nine speed like this bike or an 18 speed, which adds a front derailleur. So if you do find yourself climbing a little bit more, um, you might wanna go with that 18 speed. Between the geometry and just the overall design of the bike, one of the first words that came to mind when riding the Alpaca was comfort. So they compensated for that long front center with a shorter stem and paired with the Pacalope bars, these alt bars, it puts the rider in a very upright position. The Pacalope comes with 17 degrees of back sweep, which is a sweet spot for me. And the hoods here in the middle of the bar offer a great hand position or alternative hand position for roads or just when you wanna change things up. I, and no, I don't think the Pacalope is a real thing. All I found on Google was some cheese pack and soccer fan. Weird. All right, so despite the bike's tall look, most of the bike is really lower to the ground with the extension of the seat mask and the steer extension. But because of this, there needs to be proper adjustment of the seat post and riser after it's unpacked. And it was pretty easy to adjust to make for a nice level fit with the bars kind of in line with my saddle. If you buy this bike via a dealer, you have three size options, small, medium, and large, or 54, 58, and 62. However, Bike Friday mentions that 95% of their bikes are sold as custom bikes, and their custom fits allow you to adopt the ride characteristics around your needs and desires. Uh, they can adjust the frame length, mass length, steer and extension or riser length, chain stay length, bottom bracket drop, and so on. You get the point. All right, so I've been doing a lot of research around folding bikes, and uh, there's a lot of folks that mention folding bikes have a lot of flex, or more flex than you would want. And this all makes sense. There are more moving parts on these bikes, hinges, joints, 
and thus more spots for the bike to flex. Bike Friday has actually done a number of things to help alleviate this, including increasing the riser by 25% and also improving the steer tube clamp to avoid any unwanted play and of course, increase stiffness. So while these are things that I might not have actually caught on being a first time folding bike user, I was surprised by the ride quality right off the bat. I'm not that heavy of a rider in the first place, but I did test the bike in a way that should expose any unwanted flex. And I was pleasantly surprised by its expected handling and overall feel. That all said, it is still a steel bike with some rather long tubes in certain spots. So it certainly was not like a super snappy bike, but we're not going for that here. And that kind of goes back to setting proper expectations. All right, so the Alpaca it has a lot of mounts. Unlike much of the rest of the Bike Friday lineup, the Alpaca is special because it's designed around bikepacking and off-road travel. The bike comes with three pack mounts on the top tube for bottles or a top tube bag. Mounts on the underneath side of the down tube here, you've got three pack mounts on the fork and you have a three pack mount on the back side of the seat tube here, allowing you to run more storage below your seat pack. And there's obviously plenty of standover space on these types of bikes. So there's also an opportunity to add some custom frame bag above the top tube. You may need to think outside the box, but these types of bikes should be able to carry the same amount of gear as a larger diameter wheeled bike. Plus the benefit of the Alpaca, if you're on the shorter side, well, it's a great option to have ample standover, but it also allows for lots of storage options. And bag rub on these small diameter wheels, basically non-existent. So I was unable to ride this bike loaded down on a trip, but wanted to share Joe Cruz's thoughts who did take it out on a trip. Joe also did a written review and that can be found on bikepacking.com in the coming days. This is what he had to say. From my long experience with Bike Fridays, I know that they are usually stable when the load is low, like with front and or rear panniers on racks. I promise there's a lot less wiggle when running just rear panniers than on a big wheel bike. The Alpaca though, I've been trying out more bike packing style formats with big handlebar roll and large saddlebag. It rides really well with that kind of setup and the enormous space underneath the saddle and bar is a game changer for smaller riders. It's more than makes up for the limited tiny frame bag. It should be noted though that putting a lot of weight on the bar will noticeably increase the flex in the tall steering stock. And that can be disconcerting before you get used to it. So best to keep the bulky and light stuff, sleeping bag, puffy jacket, spare clothes in the front and the denser items in the seat bag. So this all leads me to my overall thoughts of the Bike Friday Alpaca. Despite this being my first folding bike experience, I'm pleased with the way the Alpaca rides. If I was to imagine the feeling of a folding bike, this certainly wouldn't be it. And I think that plays into what Bike Friday was doing to create a bikepacking specific bike that folds, not a folding bike that bike packs. The Alpaca starts at 2,500 USD, not the cheapest little thing, but it does come ready for the road less traveled. So what do you think about folding bikes in general? And how about the Alpaca? Let me know in the comment section below. As always, thank you all so much for watching and until next time, pedal further.